While we're talking about my genetics, I do want to talk about ApoE4 because this is really interesting and I think relevant in light of what's happened to Chris Hemsworth recently. So if you're not familiar with this story, Chris Hemsworth is part of a Discovery Channel series looking, or Disney, I forget who's making this series, looking at how to live a long time. And as part of that, he got his genetics done and he didn't know the results of those genetics. So Peter Atia in um, dramatic fashion tells him the results. And Chris Hemsworth, it turns out, is ApoE44. So Chris asks in his accent, uh, what is the risk of Alzheimer's? And Peter says, eight to 10 times increased risk. I did a reel on Instagram about this because I wanted to fill this in a little bit. It is true that if you look across the population, those with two copies of ApoE4 in their genetics do have an increased risk of Alzheimer's. But what this negates or neglects is individuality and context. Western medicine is not good at understanding context. What do I mean by this? There's really good evidence that ApoE44 doesn't necessarily mean you get Alzheimer's. I would say 30, based on the statistics I've seen, 30 to 55% of people with ApoE44 develop Alzheimer's. That's a big number. But the flip side is that 70 to 45% of people with ApoE44 don't get Alzheimer's. So what's happening in the people with ApoE44 that don't get Alzheimer's? There are other things at play, perhaps genetics, perhaps lifestyle and environment. So what I wish Peter had told Chris was, and this wouldn't make for as good television because nuance is hard to communicate to an audience. What I wish Peter had told Chris was the general population with this who doesn't think about what they eat, doesn't think about the way they live, is at an eight to 10 times increased risk of Alzheimer's. You, Chris Hemsworth, if you think about what you eat, if you live well and you are not insulin resistant, and I'll get to why I say that in a moment, you probably have a much lower risk of Alzheimer's even with ApoE44. So what are my genetics? I have ApoE33. So I am part of the population that has this more recent uh, genetics regarding ApoE. What do I mean by that? So here's the deal with ApoE. This is an apolipoprotein that is involved in cholesterol transport, glucose transport in the brain, and appears to be very affected by insulin resistance in a negative way. But historically, ApoE4 was the variant that pre-hominids and humans had for hundreds of thousands of years. It appears that ApoE3 only arose 200,000 years ago, and ApoE2 about 80,000 years ago. This means for the majority of our evolution as Homo habilis, Homo erectus, pre-hominids, we were all ApoE44. And Homo sapiens appears to have arrived on the scene about 350, 400,000 years ago. So perhaps for half or close to half of our existence as Homo sapiens, everyone, your mom, your grandmother, your brother, your sister, your dad, they were all, you were all ApoE44. This genetic variant clearly had some benefit for us. So we don't really know why ApoE3 arose, but there is good evidence that in indigenous populations of people like the Simane, T-S-I-M-A-N-E, from Bolivia and the Yoruba from Nigeria, ApoE44 is actually a protective variant when it comes to cognitive decline in the elderly. Yes, I said that in populations around the world, ApoE44 is protective against cognitive decline. Here's an article for those watching on videos. Apolipoprotein E4 is associated with improved cognitive function in Amazonian forager horticulturalists with a high parasite burden. Is ApoE4 protective when they have a high parasite burden? Who knows? But you can see here that they say, being an E4 carrier is the strongest risk factor to date of Alzheimer's disease and cognitive decline in industrial populations. It is associated with greater cognitive performance in individuals facing a high parasite burden and pathogen load, suggesting advantages to the E4 allele under certain environmental conditions. Now, is it the parasite load of these people? Is it that they have insulin sensitivity, we don't really know, but E4 does not always mean Alzheimer's necessarily. And I think that if you look at this research in detail, what you'll find is that regardless of the condition you're talking about, being insulin sensitive is important and a major determinant of the way that your body handles your genetics. I think that too often 
our culture, our Western medical culture, wants to rely exclusively on genetics and ignores the context. To further corroborate this hypothesis, here's another study, cholesterol, APOE genotype, and Alzheimer's disease. This is an epidemiologic study of the Nigerian Yoruba. What they say is that there was a significant interaction between cholesterol, APOE4, and the risk of Alzheimer's disease in the Yoruba, a population that has lower cholesterol levels and lower incidence rates of AD, Alzheimer's disease, compared to African Americans. APOE status needs to be considered when assessing the relationship between lipid levels and Alzheimer's disease risk in population studies. So what they found was that in these people, when they had the APOE4 genotype, there was no increase in Alzheimer's disease with increased levels of cholesterol and LDL. Now, this is completely different than what we see in other populations, like westernized populations, in which there would probably be a strong association there because what we know is that most people in westernized populations with high cholesterol and high LDL are insulin resistant. Is that why LDL sometimes looks bad? Probably. Does, does that mean that I believe LDL is causing cardiovascular disease? No. The takeaway from this part of the discussion is just to say that context matters. And I wish that Peter, maybe Peter has had this conversation with Chris in private. I wish that someone has the conversation with Chris and says, hey man, you need to be insulin sensitive. We need to make sure we're checking your fasting insulin and that we're actually doing research and really thinking about what makes people insulin resistant. I'm going to show you my fasting insulin in this set of labs. It's consistently low, as I've said, it's never varied. And again, I eat tons of carbohydrates and honey and maple syrup and fruit. Those don't cause insulin resistance. I believe it's clearly the seed oils causing problems at the level of mitochondria with cardiolipin, breaking fat cells. I've talked about this in the past. So this is the conversation that needs to be had with Chris Hemsworth, the way he lives, probably his vitamin D needs to be checked, his sleep, his nutrition levels, and his insulin sensitivity with a fasting insulin. The last thing I'll say with regard to APOE4 is that data connecting saturated fat with increased rates of Alzheimer's in those with APOE4 variants in their genetics are likely epidemiologic confounding that is unhealthy user bias. There's no mechanistic way that saturated fat would worsen Alzheimer's disease. And I don't think anyone with ABOE4 needs to worry about saturated fat because that means you're not gonna eat animal foods, which are the most nutrient rich foods on the planet. And we know that saturated fats have so many benefits for humans, increasing HDL, increasing hormones, increasing testosterone, being precursors for our uh, hormones. Odd chain fatty acids in animal foods are also beneficial, likely from a cognitive decline perspective, and they all come together. So the data linking saturated fat with Alzheimer's, I think is really shoddy medical detective work and is just confounded by unhealthy user bias. Those eating more saturated fat are probably eating a lot of junk food along with that saturated fat because it's saturated fat from McDonald's. And often in these studies, hydrogenated trans fat gets lumped in with saturated fat. And we know that trans fat is harmful for humans because it increases thromboxane and decreases prostacyclin. Those are two competing arms of the clotting and anti-clotting or fibrinolytic cascade respectively. So anything that increases your clotting and decreases your ability to unclot or resolve clots, fibrinolysis, it's gonna be problematic for humans. And we know trans fats do that. So you have to look very carefully at the saturated fat literature. And I think that this literature is wildly confounded by unhealthy user bias.